everyone. Welcome back to another video. I'm back. I've been doing so good with uploading. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. I have another fun video today. Well, another one that will loosen me up. It'll be fun for me. I hope it's fun for you. My mom gave me a bunch of boxes of old stuff from my childhood. I could do like a draw this in your style, but like my own work from when I was like six. I think it could be good. Like I just grabbed a handful out of one box. We're gonna look at it and then we're going to choose one. Hopefully there's a good one in there and then draw it. My biggest fear doing this is that my work will be better than, uh, than it is now. Like I already try and emulate like childlike gesture in my work, childlike colors and just like playfulness. So I guess if it's better than, I guess it's just proof that it's hard to emulate how good kids work is. So, oh well, we'll just keep trying for the rest of my life. Once again, I have my trusty camera over here. I don't know how old I am. I think it's a bit of a mix, but I'm so glad mama found them because I thought that she threw them away and I was like so heartbroken. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's have a look. Oh, okay, I think I used to write a lot of books when I was little and I think this must be a page from. Bomber loved his little calf. His name was Moonbeam. His father turned their love in half. Then Bomber had a little dream. <laughs> Okay, so clearly the story ends here for us, but it wasn't supposed to end, I'm sure. Unless it was one of those many stories that I wrote when I was little that just started with the title and ended at the first page because I got bored. I just want to draw the pictures, which is kind of like why I write books now. But anyway, let's continue. I don't think that's going to be one. Okay, this is when I was a bit older. I think this is when I was in year three or something like that. I was really into cartooning. I wanted to be a cartoonist or something like, and not even like work it for animation. I'm talking like just draw people's caricatures on the street or something. I don't know. I just drew a lot. A lot of these characters are a bit crazy. I don't think we'll do that one. Okay, clearly I love to draw horses a lot. I think this is just a farm. Quite cute, quite cute. This is a witch on a broom with her cat and two devils. My birthday's November 16th, but like for some reason I had a lot of Halloween birthdays. So I would draw my own invitations. I think this must have been one of those. A bit scary. Maybe we'll put this to the side. Maybe we will do this one. I don't know. We'll leave that one there. Okay, this I want to send to Connie because my older sister went traveling for like ages or it felt like forever when I was little. So this is a picture of the Eiffel Tower. This is actually really nice. <laughs> Dear Connie, I miss you very, very much. I hope you come home soon. Way to guilt trip a person. <laughs> I feel like I wrote many of these letters as well when she was away. Well, I like to decorate my spelling tests, I guess. Okay, this is when I was in like year three. This is disturbing. <laughs> See, this is like a hotel on fire. Oh my God. What is this? Look at this. Someone lighting a bush on fire. Another man with a gun. There's like an ambulance and police officer and there's someone with a bomb that's like tick tock, tick tock. People shooting each other. I'll help. There's one little child trying to put it out. There's gonna be a psychiatrist watching and they're gonna be like, these symbols generally mean this and this. <laughs> like you should uh, maybe sort some things out. Oh my God. Maybe my work is so fun and chill now because that was the kind of work I was creating. Oh my God. This is a masterpiece. Snoopy. I love peanuts and also I feel like Chris and I have like a, a love for peanuts. I'm also going to take a photo of that and send it to Chris. Okay, I won't recreate that just because it's like copyrighted material. You can tell how old this is because the paper is really yellow. We have fun food exercise. I don't know if I was trying to prove to my parents that I could really take care of a dog or something. Like I knew everything that I needed to do to have a dog or it's just a game. I don't know. I guess I watched Xena when I was little, which I feel like maybe isn't an appropriate show for a child. Beautiful, very beautiful. For some reason, I felt the need to label all the materials that were on the castle. I don't know if I was trying to build this castle. I don't know what I was thinking. Honestly, I don't remember doing any of these. This looks like work I do now. <laughs> flowers. Hmm. So it began young, did it? I feel like I must have liked flowers when I was little. Then I went through a phase where I hated flowers and now I like flowers again. Full circle. What is this? It's like there's a crying person. I feel like this is so disturbing. What, what was wrong with me? I like the green outlines and then a dog, some ducks. This looks like chicken leg, which is weird. A pond full of ducks, some more ducks and some chickens. It's just basically a bunch of birds, a dog pooping and someone crying. Can someone tell me what this means? Beautiful. This is a masterpiece. I don't know what this bird is doing. This is the mother. Oh, that, that has to be a worm. There's like a bird flying and the, there's like a stick in its mouth, but I think it's a worm for these birds over here. Very interesting. Oh, looks familiar. I guess all my son's now and all my sons then had faces on them. I feel like I don't have any range. I feel like I've just been making the same work for the last 20, 29 years or something. Um, 
Could this be the colonization of Australia? I don't know. I feel like maybe we might have been learning about that at school or something because I don't know why I would draw like a colonial ship. These are interesting. I don't know what they are. Very expressive. This one's kind of cool. I don't know what this is, if this is spelling something, but these animals are very cool. It looks like a cow, a mouse, a dog, a frog, and flamingos. It's quite cute. Oh my gosh. My love of apples continues. Wow, I really just have no range. I really just have only been making the same work for so long. This one's very cute. I think I drew this giraffe in this thing because a lot of Australians will remember there used to be this van that came to your school with like a man inside it and like a puppet of a giraffe and it was called Healthy Harold and he'd teach you about drugs and he'd teach you about like junk food and also like probably like sex education or something, which is a bit creepy, but Healthy Harold was a thing and I think that's the puppet sticking out of the thing. I don't know why it's in this context, but maybe we just had Healthy Harold that day. A house, a pool, I feel like this is work I still make now. I would, I don't really like drawing mythical creatures right now. Like I would, don't think I would draw a dragon unless it was commissioned by like a company or like for illustration work. Cause I just really don't, for some reason, enjoy mythical creatures, especially like medieval mythical. A very expressive tree. I think I got a little stamp here. I don't know if I gave myself that stamp or if that's a teacher stamp. I might've given it to myself cause I recognize it. Ah, the desert. This one's kind of cute. Maybe I could do this one. This is interesting. This one's a bit crazy. This, is this a Christmas one? This face is crazy. Oh, you know what this might be? I think I read this book called Bamboozled or something and it's like this topsy-turvy world where everything's crazy. Maybe this is what it is. Like flowers growing at the bottom of flower pots and like candy growing on trees, pigs flying. This looks like something I would do now. Apple trees, mountains, a sunset. Like do I even need to make work anymore or should I just post this on Instagram? Okay, let's see, this is a diary. I went to Adelaide and I saw my godparents. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so I'm like, this is a cat. This happened a lot to me. I've, I've seen other diaries where I've done this. This is a cat. And then on this page, it's like, this is a cat. And my teacher's like, Sean, you need to write something different. The month is spring. This is, I went to the zoo. This is a boat. Wow, this is my diary. Like this is supposed to be what I did that day or on the weekend. This is just showing objects and not documenting my life at all. This is Miss Hart's house. Oh, this is when I was in kindergarten because Miss Hart was my favorite teacher. I used to run across the playground and slam into her stomach and hug her. And then I also invited her to my birthday parties and she did come because she's nice. This is a caterpillar. This is quite cool actually. I like this. This is a rabbit. What is this diary? On the holidays, I went to McDonald's. <laughs> It's all like statements that the only documentation of my life is like, I'm going to McDonald's. Yes, I went to the beach. <laughs> okay, good work. That is supposed to be me. That's very cute. I feel like it does look like me. It looks like me now. This is my house. I love my mom and dad. Do I? <laughs> I feel like if I love them, I probably wouldn't portray them. Like, look at my dad's crotch. It's so long. My mom did not look like this at all. Neither do my dad. Look at my dad's nose. I like weekends. And then I think I wrote to write, went to write because, but then I didn't finish it. I didn't draw any pictures. I love my cousin's house because the... <laughs> also, my cousins don't live in Australia. Like, I have no family in Australia, so I don't know, like, what... Did I go there? I don't know. Maybe I just haven't had a thought that day. I love cats. I don't ever remember loving cats so much, but I've had three diary entries about cats. Oh, thank God I have a cat now. This is literally my work now. I feel like I should just do this. It's apple trees, flowers, a house, and a sun with a face. I feel like this is my work. I'm putting this in the pile of something we do because I could make that work again. The reindeer. Maybe it's a goat or a moose. Anyway, very interesting. Between two mountains. I did love drawing mountains then, I guess, as well. What is this? I don't know what this is. Let's look at the ones that we do want to choose from. This is kind of cool, but this is like very Halloween-y, so I feel like I shouldn't do this. I do like this. Like I like the weird like array of animals and I like the style. It's very funny, but I don't know what's going on here. So I don't know how I would recreate that because I actually cannot comprehend. This is cute. Definite contender. I do like all the crazy flowers on the cactus. I don't know what's happening in this one. This is a bit crazy. This, I don't need to recreate this. This is like all of my work already. And then there's the mount, the moose slash reindeer with the mountains. Yeah, I guess I could do a moose. 
All right, let's do that. All right, so this is what we're going to recreate. I'm going to interpret it as a moose in a mountain range with the sun and a sky. That's how we're going to interpret that. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to do some thumbnail sketches. I've got my reference here. I'm just going to leave it in front of me. And then I'm going to do some thumbnail sketches. And then we're just going to make them small. We'll do two mountains. It might not be good. I don't know what tails they have. This, and then we obviously have... Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Beep. There's like a basic composition that's very similar to what we did. We could also do like a symmetrical because I feel like that's fun to use that feature on Procreate. Oh, this might be cool. Maybe a symmetrical one is a cool way to go. I kind of love that. Let's just do a couple more because sometimes you can just pull out more than you know. Maybe we'll do a more traditional version of my landscapes which is very layered so we'll do some grass boop, boop. I'll use a reference for the moose probably it's kind of cute I don't know how the sun's at I feel like I want to make the sun happy I just feel like it's so weird for it to be sad <laughs> I just feel like, why can't it be happy? I'm deciding that it will be happy. My just drawings are too disturbing when I was little. That one's cute too. But I do like the idea of the symmetrical one. Let's try and combine the two quickly. Like, I know I probably shouldn't spend too much time sketching. Again, no reference at the moment. I want to include the smile, like, kind of like this. I like the ears being down and then boop, boop. And then we have the same grass that we had. It can be symmetrical, it cannot. Like that. Put some flowers here or there. Cool. Next step after thumbnails, we're gonna do a refined sketch based on this. So we'll keep this as a reference. We'll do this. <laughs> Symmetry. So we're going to put drawing assist on. We're going to go to canvas. We're going to go to drawing guide. Boop. Edit drawing guide and then do symmetry. Yeah, vertical. Okay. So we're going to start first with the details that will be symmetrical for sure. Oh, yeah, they're so cool. Okay. Yeah, they have square heads. Okay. I'm just going to kind of go with what I had because I feel like it's kind of cute. Let's figure out where we want the antlers to be. We'll just do some quick sketch of where we want stuff to be. And then, okay. No, no, mooses, do they have necks like this? Do we make, do we just make it like similar shapes? Like, whoop. Do they have like those feet that go like this? Who's to say, not me. Guys, I'm scrapping it. I'm going to do this one instead. Make this bigger. Oopsie doodle, I deleted it. Is that cool? I kind of like it. Do they not have tails? Oh my god, do moose not have tails? I want it to have a tail. Oh my god. It has a small tail, but I want it to have a huge tail. How many? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh, there's more. That's annoying. Will anyone notice? One, two, three, four, five. Now there's five. One, two, three, four, five. What? One, two, three. Okay, that's fine. That's even. Yay! And do they even have even in the wild? Who's to say? And so much is going through my head. I hate that being there. Do we move it a little bit like this? Do we shrink this down? We could. We could totally shrink it down. Chill. Relax. Not like those other drawings I did when I was little. And like something like that. So I'm gonna pull that down. I feel sleepy. So I'm gonna go to sleep. Look at this with fresh eyes. Paint it in the morning. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta do that. I was gonna paint it all tonight, but then I got distracted making a TikTok earlier and now it's 11.30. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the rest to mozzies. That's what I think. Good morning. Here we are again. 
I'm sorry if it's a bit noisy. It's currently raining outside, but that's okay. We can draw in the rain. So let's pick up where we left off, shall we? Okay, so this is where we left off, everybody. What's going on here? Who's to say? Now, I do like the moose. It is a bit different from this moose with the two mountains, but I think that's okay. I just want to have another look with fresh eyes at all of our thumbnails. Now we're going to do refined. I don't know if we've already done refined, but we're doing another one. I always want to feel as ready as possible before each painting, so that's why we're doing so many. <laughs> That's funny. They have really big nostrils. No offense. Yeah, that's cute. feeling better I think having time away I think I was getting a bit frazzled because I had so many different options to choose from so I am going to transfer this now and then when I get back it'll be on the paper and it'll be awesome five minutes later we begin the fun part so I've done the line work roughly um i think i will do gouache as well just because it's like i i can really imagine the rolling hills and in, in gouache a few splodges Boop. and then we'll do with the blue i might get a swatch a swatch card just so i don't mess up the colors in my art drawer i've got like a lot of scrap pieces and failed paintings i just recycle those as swatch cards i'm gonna go up lots of yellow a tiny bit of blue. Whoop. We're gonna do the yellow wash basically up until we were where we want the sky to gradient. And I think this is where I want the sky to stop start gradient. So I'll just quickly put a wash in here. Okay, I'm not taping the border or anything and I'm happy to go outside the lines. The only risk with that is when you're scanning it and cropping it for like social or whatever or for prints, you can realize that you haven't done it far enough so I like to go a little bit further than I think I'll need to for now we're gonna go in with that blue so we're gonna make sure our brush is clean sometimes I like to also go like this just to help it a little especially when you've overworked it but we want a lot of the color to be at the top so we want there to be a lot of yellow I think that's good um, in the meantime, I'm going to get out my gouache and try and think about what colors I want to use. So I think I will, there will be dashes of red, but very subtly. So I'll put that aside. I will use yellows, greens. I stepped on my green the other day and it splurted all over the bloody carpet. So annoying. Okay, those are the colors I'll use. So my technique with gouache is to basically work from the furthest back parts of the image to the front. And usually my images will be like very dioramic. I don't know if that's a word, but it's like very much like a diorama where the furthest will be up high and further back. And then each layer happens in front of each other. So that can be quite easy for me to work out. With watercolor, it's a bit different. It's kind of like you do, I would do background wash and then start on the main character because the more you add the the duller the watercolor becomes because it uses the white of the paper to kind of give it that brightness. But with a gouache, it's a different story. So that was really hard to like figure out because there's such different mediums. Like just the way that you apply them or like the order in which you apply them or the way you think about an image is so different when it comes to gouache and watercolor. So first we're gonna do the clouds. Oh no, off you. I'm running out of white gouache. I need to order some more, but we'll do the clouds first. And the clouds might have a little tinge of something here and there, maybe a tinge of yellow. Sometimes if I have leftover ink, I'll just show you. There's like some drying here and I want a little bit of yellow. I'll just put it with the gouache. It's fine, I think. <laughs> no one's telling me otherwise. If, it, if you know otherwise, let me know. So we're just gonna do the clouds to begin with. We'll do them lighter. And then if we wanna add some other colors, we can. Oh, this is still a bit wet, but we'll see. I'm still like kind of uncomfortable using gouache. I feel like I am not fully like really confident with the um, process and like knowing what to do and how to handle it. Whereas with ink and watercolor, like I really know how to handle it just because they're such similar mediums and I've been doing watercolor for so long. But 
I'm sure I'll get there with gouache. It's still a learning curve. I wonder, I was thinking about like what I'm gonna do for next Peachtober. And I feel like maybe I'll try and do oil pastels, <laughs> even though I promised myself last year that I wouldn't do a new medium. Also I promised Chris, so maybe I shouldn't do it. Just cause it's like so stress inducing. A lot of my work, especially my digital work is really flat. So I wanna just like have somewhere that I can get that texture in my work. I don't know if you can see, but I love this like yellow that's peeking through. I do like to maintain that in my work if I can. The way that I figured out how to use gouache, I feel like I already explained this briefly, was that I just treated it like how I would treat digital layers. Like with digital it's a bit easier because you can shift the layers around if you decide you've done the wrong one first or if you want one on top of the other. So I just kind of map the piece out in my mind and imagine the layers and whichever one's at the bottom I do that one first if that makes sense. It kind of sounds like now that I'm saying it out loud it doesn't make sense. So next what I'm going to do, I'll show you here, is I've got this green ink floating here and I'm like what if I add that to this? just so that the mountains can be different colors, but like similar tones. Remember, we can always add like pencil or something to darken up some of it to create more contrast later. Why'd I do so many of these little ridges in one small place? Do I need to get a small paintbrush? But I don't want to. I do love working with a round brush. I like a round and pointed tip um, and that's about it. I do have some pointed brushes but regarding brand they're not really loyal. The silver ones are really good but I'm not loyal to them. I'll just when I need a brush I'll just order one or I'll go to an art store and I'll be like but this one feels good. <laughs> We're all adaptable as Nate would say we are fundamentally okay. <laughs> just thinking is this too much contrast because I feel like if there's a lot of contrast in this background bit it'll distract from like the main subject the star if you will which is the moon we'll just have to reassess and have a look at it I might need to darken some bits up with pencil later or go over it again with like a different color use my green that I look at this this is where I stepped on it it splattered all over my carpet. I tried to rub some of it off and then it went in more. It was awful. I'm gonna put the lighter screen in the center so it's almost like a spotlight on the um, mousse, even though there's not gonna be like a ray of light or anything like that, but just so that that feels like the center point. This will be then slightly darker and these will be much darker. So it just balances the darkness of the mountains, I hope. I'm gonna put green here and I'm gonna put like a darker green by, by its side and some white so that I can just mix as I go so that you get like nice variation in tones. Like So we'll get some white, get some green. These are very unusual colors to me, but let's see how it turned out. We can even just darken it on these sides that are touching and then lighten it over here. Now I'm trying to mix a darker green, but I put too much black, so I'm just gonna put that over there. Um, and it'll be like a bluey green. So maybe just some blue would be fine. Just so that the bottom is like kind of the heaviest in terms of color. Add a bit of black. Don't add too much, because then it loses its, like the richness of it, if that makes sense. I think it needs a little bit more blue. Needs more black there. Oh, baby, can you please Watch get my battery? Stop, sweetheart. You're going to spill it on my painting. Don't crumb all over here. You've got to crumb on my workbench. That is sacrilegious. <laughs> 
I'm going to actually, I think this needs to be more green. Everything has a bit of green except for this and this. So I'm going to make this slightly more green. Add a layer of yellow onto the sky. You know, it just feels more cohesive and more monochrome because right now it's feeling a bit disjointed. And for me, it really bothers me. I don't know if anyone else feels that, but I just feel like it does. Now we're gonna attempt to do the moose. The moose, I am a bit worried about the moose because I know I wanna make it a brown, but I'm not sure what kind. So I'm gonna just start and see and we can work with it on the paper. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. All my small brushes are so ratty because I'm too, I think I'm too like rough with them. That looks yummy. That's just paint water though. No one drink this. Do not drink. Okay. Let's see here. I do like the size of this brush, but I've made it so scraggly that it's really hard. Like I wouldn't be able to do these with it. I think I'm at a point where I can start doing some pencil stuff. So let's pick out some colors. There may be some more gouache later, so I'll just leave my palette here. So let's have a look at pencils. I like to pick colors that I already have on the paper. I usually like darker or lighter versions, so things I think I'll need like darker greens, lighter greens. These are Prismacolor Premier. I find that they're really good because they're just really soft. Ooh, little, little greens. So I've got my warm greens. Do I want to use any browns? I might get some browns for the old moosey. These will be for the moose. We've got cool greens. I don't have a lot of Prismacolor like turquoises. So these are those. Cool. So now I've got all my colors. We can begin. So this is where my swatch card will come in most handy. So I can really just test these colors. We want to create some shadows here just to um, kind of create depth with like the, the back leg just because when your work's really simple it's nice to have these like elements that make it more believable like shadows, weight. I try and make it anatomically correct but I could probably do some more practice with that. There's this fly. Grr. I think because it's a little wet it's a little hard to work with like on the paper. I think these have wax in them. I think that's why. I like doing these lines because they add so much like just visual interest to the piece and also like a lot of contrast. I feel like I could work on my tones so that I could create more contrast. Often like I can do it really well in digital work but with traditional I find that my contrast can be lacking sometimes. So just something to work on. I think I hear Rocket's car. <laughs> Do I hear a map? There you are. Thank you. All right. That's interesting. What I like, I like this is a nice reference to like the childlike aspects of the original, or it's like scribbly blue. 
I love scribbling on top of gouache. I just think it adds like a lot more looseness, even though like I struggle to create looseness with my forms. I love creating looseness with texture. This is not a Prismacolor. This is a Polychromos. I like to leave like a little bit of space around. For example, I'm not like going exactly on the shapes all the time because I think it adds like a little edge light, which is really nice. I do like it. You want it to look like have that nice point of being contrived, but also like almost accidental. It's like it's controlled, but it's accidental. It's like gestural. Do the mouth first because it's going to be in the center. And then eyes. Is this a warm gray? Slate gray. Do you know what slate means? I'm almost done. Just a few more deeps. <laughs> Smile, little nose, and a little sleepy eye. You know what's funny? Like, when you're painting something, it looks so bad until, like, you add the final details. Like, when you start adding the final de details, it's like, ah. Oh. I know what I want it to look like whereas before that what you want it to look like and what it does look like is so vastly different it's like how will I ever get there I feel like this could have some pencil on it to make it look lighter so I'm gonna get a light gray I could probably use this light blue for this one or even could I use this do you think is that crazy that might be crazy. Details are the best part. I do like the painting. Oh, actually, I do like all the parts. Ah, I guess it's okay then, is it? Sometimes I'm like, why do I even do stuff underneath when I just scribble over the top anyway? But it just helps me work out the color blocking and then adds details. Maybe I'm just a scaredy cat and it's my process. Some hoops. Cute. And then we're done. I'm just gonna go splodge, 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 splodge. Do I want to put flowers? I just feel like it will ruin it. I might be able to put circles, maybe using this. What does this look like? Ooh, I do that. Just some flowers, nothing to see here. Oopsies. Ooh, we can make him have a little flower in his mouth. Yay. Then it brings in that yellow from the top and it doesn't look like as drastic. Yeah, that looks good. Now to wash my bloody pencil. <laughs> That's cute. And I just have to do my smiley face on my son. Which could be green. Who's to say it's not green? Green's fine. Ah! Still wet, but I'm so impatient. So before I show you the end result of this little exercise, I want to say a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video as per usual. Just like last time, I want to show you what I've been using Squarespace for recently. So this week I launched new t-shirts. I posted them and there's like a week between the start of the pre-order and closing the pre-order. Those kinds of posts can get lost on social when they're like super advertising and I just don't want to be repetitive. Um, and then Nate was like, why didn't you send out a newsletter? I was like, true. I wanted to keep it simple because I didn't have a lot of time. I inserted photos into my drawing app and then I just drew over the top and I put that in 
entire JPEG into the Squarespace newsletter and then made the image a button to the store. Wherever you guys clicked on the newsletter would go to the store. So I think it was a really easy and effective way to let people know in their email inbox that I used to have t-shirts. Sometimes that stuff gets lost on social just because of like the algorithm or lots of people posting or your audience not going on that day. So yeah, I thought it was really effective and I got sales straight away. If you guys haven't tried Squarespace before, go to squarespace.com slash for a little peach. You get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Enjoy it. Here is my finished piece. I'm so happy. I feel like sometimes it takes a final detail to really pull it together. The moose guy was just like sitting on the landscape and then as soon as I added the flower in its mouth and put the flowers in the landscape, it really tied the whole palette together and also tied what was going on in the image together. This is such a cute exercise. And like my younger self, yeah, I'm just really happy. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like these kinds of videos? Do you like these kinds of creative challenging videos? Because they're really relaxing for me. And I need a little bit more of that this year. I vowed to relax more. So if you guys like this, please let me know. And if you saw a different kid's drawing in there that you want me to try and recreate, let me know. I also have like boxes and boxes full. So if you want to see me recreate stuff from my teenage years, I can do that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. And um, I hope you have a nice day or night. Bye.